Uh, so why are you interested in the shadow self? Just uh, because because you believe you want to do something on it, because you find it's an interesting topic to talk about. What is it? Because काम करते हुए तो बहुत देर लगती है. It's a long labor of love. Yeah. काम करने का तो अभी कोई इंटेंशन नहीं है समझने का है पहले उटिंग <laughs> So how many of us are on self improvement journeys when i say self improvement i am talking about real self improvement i'm talking about things that we find difficult to do things that we go against our very nature but or, or what we think is our nature but we but we still push ourselves to do it and do char baar karne ke baad we think ha ye to theek hai so how many of us are on such journeys and what's your journey been about share share just 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 unmute and share yeah i just i mean i found shadows little uh, kya kehna chahiye scary and negative ke i really didn't know understand the concept but for shadow se samajh aaya tha something negative something which needs to be worked upon and yeah i also cancel something to join the session i was going somewhere i said no this can be cancelled and let's do the session thank thank you guys both of you nehendra to your priority definitely means a lot yeah. um and all also this i want to thank everyone to be here because uh, it is a festival time and i am sure today everybody must be busy shopping actually archana ji all already looks like either she is come back from the trip or about to uh, i just came that? back i just came are you you <laughs> looking there is there is something that looks a little uh, get up ish oh wait a minute we don't <laughs> really see you in our communities do we Yeah, and Bindi, I think. <laughs> and Bindi, right, right, right. Something was so, wrong. So Gun no, Gunjan different. Archana ji has got a Bindi on today. <laughs> Sorry, what Gunjan, was the context here? Something, something I missed. Gunjan was in. Renu's Bindi is missing. It's gone there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Gun Gunjan for some reason likes my Bindis. Yeah. <laughs> So we have Ill Bindi helps in hypnotizing people. अच्छा जी अब अगर Bindi वो गोल गोल जाती है क्या वो जैसे पिक्चरों में दिखाता है ना गोल गोल जाती है and he start doing this 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 and you know all those things. तो रेनू के बाद तो सारी चीजें हो गई. I know. <laughs> I I would say uh, I start recording with my Bindi on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> are you saying we're red light types? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Hi, so no, we haven't heard from you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, both of us are basically I, calling out people. Sonal and yeah, Vidika. I. Yeah, Vidika, please put your camera on. <laughs> Uh, please, me, ma'am. Just give me no, give me one minute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I am just. No, no we just sorry. like nothing like that. We just we just like to see people's faces. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just just one minute. So that is. Vidika, that. before and after, हो जाएगा. दोनों दिखाएँगे. And if somebody knows how to oh, wait, I do. I looked it up. I, I need to figure out a way to stop incoming calls because the moment an incoming call comes on my phone, oh yeah, come. Um, it kind of disconnects from Zoom. There you are, Gunjan. Hello. I thought Gunjan was showing the shadow self first dark screen. <laughs> I got it right now. <laughs> Trust you to do that. Okay, we'll start the session now. I think on Dhanteras, uh, this is oh twelve. Moment I said we're not going to get more folks. Here's another one. There's Shweta. Because a bit, a little while ago we were talking and we kind of agreed that today, so all of you shopping are doing. Oh, just a minute. 
now it's today neeru okay i need to reclaim host on this computer now the host and i can now share my screen can you see this visible yes yes awesome okay so uh, thank you guys for coming thank you thank you rainy for taking out your time thank you guys for prioritizing it especially those of you who have canceled stuff to be here and that's very nice of you and we love it when you prioritize wellness and prioritize curiosity about wellness and so on so thanks so much for that that is one so uh, this is ras uh, ras is something i don't really talk about very often uh, ras is the um, Oh, by the way, Renu, I forgot to put our profile slides on this. I just remembered. <laughs> so, Ras is a <laughs> Ras is an attempt to 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 uh, to connect uh, what our traditional wellness has been all about. So, for example, we about two thousand years ago, I think, was when we actually stopped innovating in India. and but before that we were doing a bunch of really awesome things we started we were documenting a lot of stuff we were doing a lot of experiments with lots of uh, health and wellness and biology a lot of stuff is happening around here and we were documenting it also ras is an attempt to uh, to kind of connect all that ancient wisdom indian wisdom to what uh, to what modern science is uh, is experimenting and and uh, verifying and confirming and all those things that we're be doing uh this is because a lot of things uh, if if you look if you look at what clinical trials are all about these days you'll find there are a bunch of them that that are actually proving what ayurveda and various other things not all of it mind you but a lot of aspects of these ancient sciences so they're proving a lot of the, the good things about it so what we're trying to do is connect it all together and build it build it into a into a holistic protocol along with the support of the past we already have the holistic protocol but it is entirely grounded in modern science today but i'd like to connect it to the past and that's what ras is all about now this session is about illuminating our shadows and uh, there are two of us here in the session today one of them is me i'm a transformational coach and a, a transformational coach largely speaking the hypnotherapy and all of that is things that support that coach role and we have renu honda right there in the stripe red and white t-shirt she is a transformational psychologist she's got over 20 years experience and this is what she does transform people so 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 what we're going to do today is i will be talking about the shadow self and and things like that and renu is going to be uh, helping by answering questions and explaining the psychological basis of that so if you've heard of carl jung what he said was that how can i be substantial if i do not cast a shadow and uh, because if i have to be whole we do have a black and a white we do have a front and a back and a reverse and all of that so that's what carl jung had said a long time ago and shadows are really a part of uh, part of jungian what is called jungian psychology carl jung's so part 1 is about what why and when so what's in our shadow selves does anybody have something to say what do you believe is the shadow what are your pre existing what, what do you already know about this what did you think come on it's it's, it's already even if it's something really out of the blue come on go for it what we hide from the real world is that shadow or no what we know. hide from the real world okay anyone else i think uh, part of ourself where we uh, don't want to go or don't want to address or hide from the world okay okay what we don't want to address what we hide from the world all right what else anyone else has any perspectives on what is shadow our shadow Okay, I'm I'm looking at Gunjan right now. She usually yeah. has something to say. Sorry, who is that? Ruti, Ruti, you were you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ah, no, no it's okay. No, I was saying the uh, maybe it is the it's the negative self of us which we don't want to talk about or even address, even within ourselves. Fair enough. So, so our uh, we we've got a whole lot of parts of us, and and we're not uh, we're not saints. We're not saints. We've got a lot of good qualities. We've got a lot of bad qualities. We've got everything happening: good, bad, wrong, right? So, but we we're we're a mixture of the whole thing, aren't we? So, the parts of us that we believe to be to be dark or not as good or 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 you know something we might be ashamed of for whatever reason. It doesn't have to be logical. it doesn't have to be make sense at all but those parts of us that we don't really like or we don't really believe to be as good as as what we've been taught 
Now, for, for example, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, there's a very somebody who's very inquisitive and uh, very curious, and and they're told when their children are something that that you should not be like this or this is bad, and repeatedly over a period of time that might that might uh, you know kind of sink down to be a part of our shadow self. Then, you know, for example, and and num- and number two is it doesn't have to be uh, bad qualities. It can be good qualities as well, but that's a separate type of concept. In this concept, in this context, we we're going to talk about the negative qualities, but the shadow self can also consist of positive qualities and these are all qualities which we have disowned and we disregard we don't we don't just we have, we actually we have, we have separated ourselves from them we washed our hands of them we don't even consider ourselves to have those qualities for all facts and purposes we are completely ignorant of those qualities and they are completely unconscious and we actually daba ke rakhte hain usko usko hum repress karte hain at this point i'm going to ask renu to step in and and, and talk a little bit about repression Sid, before I start, I want to tell you you should go a little slow. After that, okay. 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 So, uh, talking about repression, as we are talking about shadow, so it is apparent from the word we are talking about something dark. And when we say dark, as Sid mentioned, that it is not necessarily negative. What we are talking about is what we don't want the others to see. so this is something like a room which you sweep before the guests are coming up and you put all the dirt supposed dirt and under the carpet so these are the qualities which you don't want anyone to see and when we talk about repression we are talking about something which we do subconsciously with force to go at the back of our mind we try to erase them from a conscious mind put them down under so that they do not they do not surface so these are the qualities which through our own understanding others might not think they are bad we don't want the others to see as part of our personalities so this is what repression is where we use a force to put them at the back side of our mind and we also would want to know here what is suppression where uh, the repression is a unconscious uh, act suppression is something that you are aware you are doing but you know you are forcefully with conscious mind trying to push these memories back or the qualities back thanks renu thanks so much in fact uh, thank you for the carpet example the next time uh, i've discovered these wonderful carpet cleaning videos on 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 facebook so what they do is they start with a really black shadow black carpet and then they start the tools and by the time wo khatam hota hai bilkul white hota hai so next time renu you're talking i'm going to be playing that video in the background i'm serious that would be lovely great example <laughs> so these negative bits and pieces of our personality are all these usually these primal negative emotions are usually all these things inadequacy helplessness depression a feeling of being overwhelmed all those things that we feel some of us feel these things a lot of the time but this that is slightly different because that we are feeling it consciously we know we are feeling those things or we we know we are like that so this is a little bit of a bit of a bit of a somewhere in between but it usually consists of these kind of qualities and attributes and i just remember to go slow and emotions <laughs> all right so what's in our shadow selves uh, so we have this now uh, but when is the shadow self born when does it get created so it starts from it starts while we grow uh, it starts in the process of growing up because ultimately if you think about it when we when we growing up when at at a certain point in time everything is fine we don't know what's good we don't know what's bad we don't know what's right we don't know what's wrong everything is right there's very little things that are wrong until ek piche padta hai and then we say oh this must be wrong or fir jab char baar padta hai it must be really wrong aur chhe baar aur padta hai then we say who we need to really not do this kind of shit again and that starts getting repressed so it starts with the growing up years so as we grow up we start learning if you remember the previous slide good bad right wrong as per our conditioning most of our conditioning happens as we grow up so as we grow up uh, the first parts of the shadow self start being gone through the process of being brought up interacting with friends and family uh, in school with teachers and all of that 
Then secondly, while growing up and after growing up, also while we're living life, experiencing life, we come across various situations. Some of which tell us, tells us that some of our qualities are desirable, some of them are undesirable. So wohi cheez jo, jo, jo hamare bachpan mein hoti thi, wohi cheez starts happening to us as we grow up. But again, these happen uh, when we are, let's say, more self-aware. So uh, I would say the process slows down a little bit, but it definitely continues. And finally, if we... Aapko yada jab pehle bola tha, pehle ek pada, fir do pada, fir chhe pada, kabhi kabhi ek time pe agar pachas pada jata, then we have automatically we say this one incident is enough for us to you know completely i do not ever want to be this sort of thing again so we start doing that but now why have i said auxiliary mechanism for that i'm going to once again ask rainu to jump in and talk to us about how we actually cope with trauma okay uh am i still feeling... too fast or any... am i going okay i think okay, you fast. are still a little fast yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so when we talk about trauma um, and when it becomes difficult to manage, that is usually when we are not able to accept the stimulus that has caused us any grief or anything which is not comfortable. So the first thing in the healing process or in managing trauma would be when you start accepting, yes, this is something which I don't like, but it has happened. So the moment you start the acceptance, you will start healing. Because till the time you are in denial, you don't know. Since you've not identified the problem, how are you going to fix it? Since you've not accepted that this is the event that has occurred, how are you going to like, you know, start managing uh, to come in terms with that incident? So first, acceptance. Second, lean on people. Uh, lean on, when I say lean on people, a lot of people who think that they should not seek help or not talk about things. So whosoever is your support system, whosoever gives you a listening ear or whosoever you think is someone who has a rational thought process, please lean. And second, uh, third, don't let suppression and repression come in here. If, if you are sad about something, if there is trauma, you need to cry, you need to rant, you need to scream, please do that. Because the moment you start holding that feeling inside you, it is going to come up with all, side of, all types of negative repercussions. Then prioritize positivity, which is, this is something which I have borrowed from Sid. He keeps saying this, think at, things with a positive mental frame. Instead of brooding over the negative things, think about uh, positive things. So I would say, yeah, think positively about things. Then if all that, this has not worked, then seek help because you might be at a, uh, at a point where you need clinical assessment. Here is something that I called PFA, which is psychological first aid. So speak to somebody who knows this, talk to them and let that person help you in taking a decision whether you need a psychiatric uh, help where you need to, uh, you know, need to deal with this thing through medicines. And then, of course, there is uh, other types of therapies and there are different, different modalities with different type of therapies. One, of course, we have is we have another group, which which is our doodling group. And we say this, that that is doodling to release stress. Then there is CBT and other form of psychotherapies available. But most important here, I would say, is self-care. You need to put yourself in priority start taking care of yourself and everything else will start falling in place. You know, I've done a course on psychological first aid, but this is the first time I'm hearing somebody actually speak the words. I've never heard this term spoken, psychological first aid. First time I'm hearing it. Well, after the course. Thank okay, you. So, Thank you. So yeah. why do we have shadow cells... So we have shadow cells because they are a part of us. We have, like we said, two sides of the same coin. We have good and we have bad. So we've got uh, we've got all sides in our in our being, and we've got that as well. 
Now, again, uh, number two is uh, when we, as we're growing up, uh, we, we start acquiring values, we start acquiring models and things like that, where according to those systems, values and models and all that, there are very distinct good and bad, right and wrong and all that stuff. So, wo bhi usko jata hai. we start, and we start, uh, if we are the obedient types, then we might start suppressing the good, uh, the bad qualities and, you know, allowing the, allowing the only the good ones to shine through or to recognize only that. Or if maybe if you're the rebel types, maybe the opposite thing happens. I'm not entirely sure. All of us, you know, work in very different ways. So, so, but the fact happens, the fact is that during the process of acquiring these models and values, if we are to acquire something, then we also walk away with a very, very distinct sense of right and wrong and good and bad. And that's where the process of separation happens. And then the other things is we start, we, when we live life, like I said, uh, after growing up, after the upbringing years also, these sort of things happen where we see various things happen to us. Uh, like, like, for example, at the workplace, we might say that we might find that if we do certain things in a certain manner, uh, we might invite certain types of responses from our environment. So this is really an environmental thing that as we exist in an environment, we start getting feedback in from that environment. And over a period of time, we begin to... Um, highlight the what we believe gets us uh, what we believe gets us the right sort of attention and we um, start suppressing what we believe gives us the wrong type of attention over to you again Ray. okay when we say negative attention it is it is an attention but with a negative response like a child who's trying to get your attention and he's tugging at your shirt sleeves continuously you might keep like, you know, ignoring it for a bit, and then you would turn towards that child and yell, stop. Similarly, in the same context, if a child comes up with you and the child is drawing and they want you to look at their drawing and give them the feedback on that or appreciate and, uh, you know, kind of encourage them. But we are so busy in our own lives, we would just turn back and rebuke that child. So that child probably would hold this memory and never pick up something to draw again. So this quality of his would go into the shadow self. So this is what we mean by the negative attention, where we, something that is tugging at our mind to respond to the person and you turn back and give them a negative response to this. Ignoring here, I would like to mention is also a form of negative attention. Thank you. Shit. Now, why does this shadow self really matter? Okay, now I want you to, this here I'm going to invite responses from you, please. Why do you think the shadow self matters? I mean, uh, the people in this room are somewhere between maybe 35 to 65 or something like that, or roughly speaking. Now, 35 to 65, we've existed for a huge number of years without even sometimes knowing about the shadow self, without doing anything about it. And here we are all fine sitting on Zoom, weekend hair planner. So why should we be looking at the shadow self? What are, what are your thoughts? Tell me. I believe this is something I would like to accept, but not able to accept because it is the shadow self. I, it is something I have been hiding. It won't be acceptable. This is shadow self. This is the shadow self. Ashnari, yeah. you are muted now. Mm -hmm. If we have uh, any kind of shadows, it mm -hmm. um, comes out in different forms. Sometimes uh, in anger or depression, mm -hmm. we are not able to express it, but our behavior is changed. I think that. Okay. Anybody else? Any other perspectives on why does the shadow work and all matter? Why can't we continue ignoring it? Penthis, you know, these penthis, chalis. Chalis ek saal to hum sabhi karte hain. Chalis ko lag bhag ignore. Kyun karte hain? Uh, why can't we continue doing that? Because the thing is, yes, uh, we can. Sorry, who was that? Renu? Renu, yeah. Ah, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to say here, you know, uh, since we were since we've already established that when we suppress or repress these things, they go mm -hmm. deep down in our memory dump. And But the thing is, we are not eliminating it. They are just going down. And it, it is like that demon who's going to like, you know, raise its head 
when it will get the chance. So mm -hmm. the first alarming uh, signal that anyone can think is when you start behaving unlike your basic nature. If you are quiet by nature, you start screaming or start losing your temper over things which you normally would not like, you know, feel bad about. Or sometimes you snap at people, which is not usually your style that or sometimes you say harsh things which are very, very uncharacteristics of that personal uh, personality who's talking about them. So it becomes alarming because there are times when you start acting unlike yourself. And because you don't know why it is happening, it will, uh, it will add on to the level of stress and trauma that not only you are bothered, but you are also acting unlike yourself. So this is something that needs to be first acknowledged and then fixed. Sit. Thank you. So I have in this context about ignoring, I have good news and I have bad news. If you just hold on one moment, Ritu, while I just make this point, I'll come right to you. So the good news is, Yes, we can continue ignoring the shadow cells as most of us have been doing all our lives. The bad news is there are consequences. <laughs> so we'll have to do something about it. <laughs> okay, so um, so how do we project? Uh, back to you, Renu. If you're, so this project, I would like you to answer it in the next one, please. This is a slight mistake in this. It was supposed to be in the next slide. So what are the consequences of ignoring our shadow selves? So lots of consequences here. So we have relationship consequences. So we have leadership consequences. Uh, we have our day-to-day -day life. Uh, the quality of our day-to-day -day life starts coming down due to projection. At this point, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to ask Renu to talk about what is projection. Uh, then here's a very interesting thing. Our creativity can get blocked in the, uh, as, as a consequence. Now, a lot of, I've been working on this for a while. How do we unlock creativity? I'm not at all creative. Uh, are you saying that you can't make six lines on something and paint it in six different colors and call it abstract? You know, so it's very interesting. So apparently, even the creative process can be enhanced or unblocked in the case of some individuals if we when if we start working on our shadow self and we can remove or let's say smoothen out that emotional, let's say, highway where all our communication happens, our perceptions pass through the same highway, the same channels and all that. So uh, we, can, we can remove even the blocks. And the other, other thing is that our, our, our point of view of reality begins to get distorted. It, it becomes difficult to uh, figure out what is real, what is not. As it is, a lot of us work on assumptions. We, we tend to take one little assumption, usko lekar hum, you know, we, we, we build a whole building based on one little assumption. Ab dekhi, ab assumption is also based on distorted perceptions and distorted perception of reality. Imagine that. Imagine the disastrous consequences that can happen if we start acting on things that just are not real. Over to you, Renu, for projection. What is projection? And if you, after that, if you guys could answer the question that have you ever experienced projection? Okay. So as the, as the term says, project. Projection is when we project something. Project something means we visualize or we put the assumption. It is like what we are feeling, but we don't, do not want to own that feeling. So we start saying this, the other person is feeling it. Something like, you know, uh, if you don't like a particular food that you are eating and you don't want to say it because maybe somebody you like has cooked it. So you would say this, that I liked it, but maybe... You know, Papa didn't like it or Mama didn't like it. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Or, or, or uh, you know, you, you comment about somebody dressing a certain way. Oh, her style of dress, dressing is racy or she wears such bold designs. That is because either you do not have the guts to dress up that way and or probably you do not like the person. So you pick up that thing and put that negative implication on the other person's this thing. You might not like the person, but you do not have the guts to say it. So you would attack the dressing sense or you want to dress that way and you don't have the guts yourself. So you want to let that person go down. Or it's like, you know, you are angry and you are not able to express that anger or you are irritated and you are not able to, you know, uh, actually accept that you are in a rattled state, what you would do is, why are you acting in a weird manner? Or why are you losing your temper over something which is not important? But it is actually your own mindset 
which you have put in the shadow and trying to put it onto the other person. So this is what projection is. And, and so many times after, you know, I started reading in detail about this, I realized 80% of the times when we are actually doing any negative implication, it is because it is coming from inside us and not actually from the other person. You're saying that most of the time we are, we are accusing others of anything negative. Chances are it is a projection? Yes. Oh, interesting. So, coming to our audience, have you experienced projection? Have you ever had something told to you and you look at them and say, me? How can me? <laughs> have you ever done that? <laughs> Gunjan is nodding. Come on. Hey, Ritu, I'm so sorry. I forgot to get back to you. Go ahead, please. <laughs> and, 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 camera, and cameras are required for questions. <laughs> okay, Angie, good. Hi. Tell me. Um, so... I um, was asking about, um, in terms of projections, mm -hmm. um, what about um, physical, medical issues that come up um, because we are ignoring, because certain things that we need to deal with in terms of the shadow mm -hmm. work, does it manifest sometimes in medical issues? Because sometimes you would look at, for example, my mother, I mean, in, in our family, we have... Um, multiple people having breast cancer. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> we are looking at, um, well, of course it is said that it's genetic, but at the same time too, I mean, where I have been doing my screens and scans and of course our girls, we have lots of girls in our family. Um, you're looking at whether it is something genetic or maybe something that in our family that we do need to address or a certain issue that we do need to address that we are not addressing over the generations. Um, may I say it? No, so I, I'm sorry. I thought, uh, I, I, okay, I was going to just, just give me, give me, give me 10 seconds. I was just going to give a very quick answer. Uh, yes, I believe uh, uh, on one hand it is genetic. I think, uh, I think that's, we're talking about the BRCA1 marker, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so there is definitely genetic this thing, and on the other hand, yes, uh, yes, repressed uh, emotions, repressed uh, the, the the process of repression ha does, in my opinion, tend to cause physical manifestations, and that's my short answer. Over to you, Rain. I actually wanted to say the same thing. Yes, it is genetic, but since that is not in your control, but. Uh, you said there are multiple cases of the similar, uh, you know, uh, disease in your family. So yes, probably by fearing it, you are manifesting it psychologically. Okay. So you need to okay. release, release. Yeah, you need to release this fear. And also answering another thing, uh, Ritu, that you were saying, any negative emotion that you hold in your body for more than three days can actually result into physiological uh, conditions. We will be reading a very interesting book in our reading group in a, in, a, in a few weeks' time. And that book is also going to talk about things like this, what we were saying, what you're asking, Ritu, but the other way around, how we can cause physiological changes in our body through the process of meditation and things like that. So we'll be talking about, we'll be reading this book, uh, I won't tell you the name, in a few weeks' time. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. And I hope you joined that uh, reading group. It's good fun. Um, and uh, Sid, uh, Sid, one, one thing. Yes, ma'am. Ritu, how about you talk to us after the session also, please? Um, actually, I will have to make an appointment. Well, we will have to probably set up um, another Zoom meeting. I'm actually on my way out. No, no, not moment, now. Please feel free to contact. Kabibi, 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 Kabibi. Kabibi. Yes. I would That's, love that. The, actually, yes. the, that that should be our line. Please feel free to contact us. Thank right. you so much. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now, thanks, Ritu, for bringing that up. And now, what are the benefits of shadow work? So as you can imagine, if we start, uh, when we start removing those little bits of us inside, which influence our way of being, which influence the way we interact with others, which influence the way we think, which influence the way we see things, in the way we perceive things, interpret things. Basically, they influence all the inputs coming into our systems, all the 
all the ways in which we process and interpret those inputs, everything is being influenced by these repressed, uh, by these repressed um, qualities, let's say. So when they go away or when they, we become aware of them or when they, they become alleviated or their effect is reduced, what happens? We experience beautiful relationships, our relationships improve, our connections improve. Sometimes I say like that, okay, par bhi kisi prakar ke event mein jane se dimag kharab ho jata hai, ya kisi jagay par jane se kuch ho jata Because there are lots of things associated with us, associated with those places, people, things, animals, whatever. So uh, nothing is free from the from being perceived, right? So whatever can be perceived can also be a trigger. And if we are going to fix the basis of those triggers, then likely chances are that nothing very few things will continue to trigger us and our relationship with all these things will improve plus we get a much clearer sense of reality our perceptions will become much clearer we'll be able to look upon the world look at people and see them for what they truly are because we are not interpreting them through that prism through that layer of our emotion we'll be able to see people things what they actually are our, our energy increases, our sense of vitality, our, our, our well-being, all of that increases. Suddenly you find you have more energy for a lot of things. You can go more places, you can, your jitana, you know, energy you have, it, it lasts much longer. Our, our emotions seem more stable and, and we seem to, I, I, still, I, I still don't have a definition of maturity, huh, by the way, but we seem to feel more mature than, uh, than, than what we were. We seem to be able to handle things that we didn't handle so well in the past. We don't seem to fly off the handle as much as before so so many things like that Achha. and then finally we have greater creative powers this is the most startling and i like this the best of all i like the first one and the last one the, actually I like most of them but i like the last one really greater creative powers think about it you can actually get more creative once you get a little more sorted i don't think we've really made this connection before being sorted equal to being more creative nobody's ever said this but it's actually being said right now so think about this if you would like to get creative and creative is not just for artists creative is for all of us creative solutions for for relationships creative solutions for children uh, at the workplace uh, uh, all of us can can do with creativity because what is creativity really I mean, several hundred maybe thousand jumps in logic so you can't really see the logic there is one but lots of jumps it's taken so that means we're basically going to be able to increase the speed of work increase the way we work uh, and and so on so greater creative powers so now one moment here um, where we are where we are talking about the benefits of shadow work here i would simply say this sometimes there is something that we all want to do we have the desire to do it, we have resources to do it, and we also have the will to do it. But still, we are not able to productively go ahead in that direction. What is it that stops us? And that answer could lie in healing of the shadows in you. So if at all you have wondered that I have all the required ingredients, but I haven't been able to like, you know, achieve what I have been wanting to do, you need to start working on your shadows. And you probably would be able to go ahead and get it done. And so, at this point, I'm also going to say one more thing. A lot of the times when you're at the end of your tether and you're kind of looking up or in bed or weeping or what and saying, why me? Because you cannot figure out why me. I'm assuming that's a natural consequence of what you were saying, Venu, So why me? And this is it. You don't know why, but it's inside you. After all, nobody can be can be can be denying you opportunities for absolutely no reason. So it's got to be something in us. But we don't know. And this is that part. We, we might actually see more opportunities come our way because the things we are not aware of doesn't mean they doesn't inf uh, influence the things around us. It still does. So therefore, without knowing it, it will suddenly seem as if something has changed and suddenly the opportunities start coming. And that's wonderful. Now, part three is about what we can do and how we can move ahead. These are just tools. You still need a guide of some sort. Now, you can be your own guide. You can develop your self-awareness or you can talk to somebody else for being a guide. Talk to your family members. Talk to talk to somebody who can who, who looks upon you, who, who, who understands you well. Talk to a therapist, but talk to somebody if you like. Unless you're very self-aware, then you can do it entirely yourself. You don't need anybody else. Now, what I want you to consider are five things. 
Number one is we need to learn how to reach a state of balance. We need to learn how to balance ourselves, to center ourselves, how to ground ourselves at that point in time and instantly where we are, be able to just be calm and reach a sort of zero state. In NLP also, there's something called a zero state. There's also something called a know-nothing state. Uh, you might also, in the hypnotherapist here, might consider it a state of, a state of you know, a reasonably deep state of trance or, or basically all the lay people over here, basically, state of calm of being balanced of being centered that is one even if it is temporary even the temporary state will, will allow us insights into us which we might not have uh, have uh, experienced before next is something which i find most of us don't really have the ability to love ourselves the ability to care for ourselves and most of the people i see we tend to prioritize our own self-care at the end of everybody else's self-care yeah to ek to wo hai. Yeah, we say self-care is the same as pampering. Niche your question is, but up to the core caring. Is self-care the same as pampering? Please think about it. By the time I'm done with five points, I'm going to ask you. So if you have an answer, that would be lovely. Uh, so we have to develop the ability to love ourselves. To love ourselves means when we love our children, we don't just pamper them. We love them, which means we want to do good things for them. We want good things to happen to them. We want them to be able to do good things. But somehow when we talk about ourselves, we either don't love ourselves or we don't allow us to love ourselves or we pamper ourselves instead of loving. Achha. Then we also have to, uh, we, we, not only do we have a tendency to be less than aware of ourselves as much as we ought to be, but they, at the same time, we also tend to be quite judgmental about ourselves. We tend to be our own harshest critics. We don't really assign as much awesomeness to ourselves as we ought to, as everybody else does, except us. Everybody else thinks you're awesome, except you. I, I think that might be familiar for, for, for a lot of us over here, who a lot of us have fans and followers all over the place, but Oh, me, look at that. I'm looking into the mirror. Mm, no. <laughs> so, yeah. So we have to develop the ability to create a non-judgmental self-awareness. That we don't judge ourselves. We just say, okay, fine, this is who I am. This is where I am. This is where I've come from. This is it. This is fact. It's not an opinion or something meant for judging. And, and um, that's just it. Just self-awareness without any attached evaluation. And uh, number four, we need to allow ourselves to be honest with ourselves. Ek to denial hai where we might deny it to others. But fine, let's not keep, let's not bring others into it. But let's at least be honest with ourselves. If, 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 we, if we come across with the feedback about ourselves that this is who you are, or this is a quality that you have or might have, let's be open enough to accept the possibility. We don't even have to accept that quality or accept the statement. We simply have to acknowledge the possibility, not even probability, the possibility of that being true. And just let it hang there. It doesn't. We don't need to reach a conclusion that very moment. We can just let it hang there. Time will prove us right or wrong. Time will prove that statement right or wrong. But but for for us to be able to for it to be able to do that, it needs to be hanging there. It needs to be considered even a possibility. Hagan musse pehle hi nikal diya. So what's the point of what's the point of being self-aware and this and this and that about it, right? So we need to be allow ourselves to be honest about ourselves and not reject any incoming feedback, whether it is internal or external, just because we might not like it or it might not be true but if it might not be true it also might be true so that's two sides of the same coin right so let's accept it let it hang there let time prove it right or wrong rather than our judgments or our uh, thoughts at that time and finally please 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 become a prodigious note taker find a diary keep a pad write something somewhere you've got to take notes our memories are not as good as we think they are um, and I've tried this, by the way. I thought I've got a bloody good memory. I remember things from so long and Falana Falana. And I've tried it. I do not remember contexts. I might remember what happened. I might not remember what happened around it. Everything is important, right? The context is important. The thought is important. All of that makes sense. So how about writing it down? And you don't have to write down a paragraph either. Ram Kahani likhne ke zarurat nahi. All you need to do is write, ye hua tha, is din ka hua tha, inke saath hua tha, is context mein hua tha, chota, chota, chota. That's it. Baki sara ajayega. Just put the cues there. In fact, this is a memory model. It's called the cue dependent memory model. That if we have enough high quality cues, we can recall the whole thing. So put a bunch of high quality cues there. Name, place, location, context. Sab kuch dal deje. Baki sara, sari ke sari kahani apne ab ajayegi. So become a prodigious note taker. And now my question to you. Is self-care the same as pampering? Why, why not? What would you do? Come on. How many people actually think there is a difference between self-care and pampering? There is a difference, yeah. There is a difference. Then tell us. 
I was thinking I'm the only one pressing the button. Let's somebody else do it. <laughs> Come on, Ritu. Why don't you press the button? We haven't heard from Neeru as yet much. Neeru or Ritu? See, I don't ne know. Neeru, Neeru, and both the Ritu. Neeru. Yes. Hi. Oh. would be for me. I mean, I'm just giving an example. As a female, I would say getting my regular beauty routine done. Pampering would be going to CTC and buying a 50,000 langa, something like that. That's the difference <laughs> for me. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Ritu 2. Ritu 2, you have something to say, ma'am? Uh, Ritu without uh, the double E. Oh, oh, okay, the other Ritu, okay. <laughs> yeah, you have to say um, so I think that um, a lot of people in this world, because everybody is forced to be, to think as, as anything to do with self is selfishness, that they believe that anything less than sacrifice is pampering. Anything less than sacrifice is a luxury and um, is something that we are groomed and, and this is culturally based culturally in different areas of the world it is culturally but mm -hmm. self-care really is just like we care about other people and we give them what they need to grow and develop and to flourish we need mm -hmm. we deserve and we need to give ourselves that as well too on some level while we are doing this for other people in our lives and many of us tend to forget the self-care aspect and they build a lot of negativity or a lot of um, <clears throat> instances where we then tend to project whatever we are not, whenever we are not taking care of yourself and it comes out in personality changes, it comes out in medical issues, it comes out in all of these negative things. Gotcha. So here's the thing. So when, we, when we talk about self-care, imagine if you're caring for somebody else. Let, let's say we're caring for someone who's ill and who's in bed and... And for some reason, that person would like to have three and a half drinks every day. Are we going to say, go for it? Probably not. We will say, have less. And so we, we, we will care for them because we have, what we're trying to do is, is, is make sure they come out of it all right. Similarly, when we talk about children, when we're caring for children, we, we actually want them to learn lessons. We want them to develop their skills. We want them to do so many things that they could, but they are not. While we like to pamper them as well, but it's very different, right? So the same way, but when we talk about ourselves, it's about being able to tell ourselves the honest truth. It's able to be, be honest with ourselves, uh, allow ourselves to learn lessons, develop qualities that we need. Perhaps we, perhaps we are, let's say, overly attached to, attached to certain ways of being. Maybe, uh, maybe, when it's, uh, maybe the, it's about a desire to see the whole family together at Diwali. And it's not strong desire that for some reason, somebody is not able to make it. For some reason, we get really sad about it. So self-care might say, instead of making sure that everybody is there on Diwali, self-care might say that, why don't we talk about accepting the possibility that sometimes everyone might not be able to make it. So that's also an aspect of self-care. Rubbing it with the little edges all around us and helping us to be more rounded, more stable, more contributive, more happy human beings. Would you have anything to contribute there, Mrs. Handa? Yes, I would say uh, self-care is a much larger perspective than just pampering. Pampering may be a small part of self-care. When we say pampering, we actually mean indulgence. And indulgence is not necessity. And self-care does not mean getting materialistic things uh, or, you know, going to a spa or getting pampered, buying lenga, or, you know, indulging into things which probably do not contribute to your well-being. And here I would say well-being and not satisfaction because pampering can, pampering can give you satisfaction, but not the sense of well-being. When you say self-care, which means you prioritize yourself not go for the short-term gratifications, instant gratifications, you see the long-term implications. You talk about standing your own ground and meeting squarely all the attacks that are coming your way. And one thing here I have uh, learned 
with experience and with um, a lot of like you know encouragement and coaxing from people and at this point here I, i'm happy to say amit is here amit is my brother in law and <laughs> this is the first time he's attending my session so amit and said two people who have actually always encouraged me to you know prioritize self be happy yourself and then go ahead and do things so like they say this has become my favorite line here you cannot pour from empty vessel so you need to be fulfilled yourself you need to be gratified yourself before you can do anything for others so your priority priority at any given point of time should be you first and then others and there is a difference between caring for yourself and becoming self centered or selfish do not become a carpet so that people walk all over you the moment you become assertive and the moment you start respecting yourself nobody else would be able to take care of you and this self care notion would go a long long way for your physical and mental well being when you say you care, you you care for yourself which means you're thinking about your needs you're thinking about your emotional needs you're thinking about what you want to do to feel good at any given point of time self care also means this that you give yourself time to grieve if you have to fix your problems accept yourself as you are but keep working for betterment said Okay, and now we have congratulations. Almost the last slide, and I forgot to edit this one. It should be three simple exercises, not two. <laughs> okay, one. One is you have to be able to observe your emotional states and then write about it. So just write it down. What am I feeling? Maybe write about the context. Where am I feeling this? What happened, and so on. And after some time, you will start seeing a pattern. There's no need to analyze it then and there. Just write it down and let it be. Then after some time, you might find a pattern that every Tuesday, maybe around this time, I seem to be experiencing this. But every Tuesday around the same time, I'm also doing this. So maybe these two things are connected. But for that, we have to let one whole week pass, right? Or even to get two Tuesday samples. That means at least a month would I have to have passed of journaling before we were able to see this pattern. So the process of journaling is going to allow us to identify patterns, something human beings are really good at, as well as to write down these emotional states. And as we even write them down, we will become more aware of what that this is something I experienced. That is something I experienced. Oh, this is also something I experienced. You know, I'll get to know the the, the width, the spectrum of the emotions that I experienced. So number one is to write it down. Number two is to start having dialogues with ourselves. Yes, crazy people do the same thing, but this is not about that. It's not about and looking at like, oh, hello, how are you? And there's nobody standing there. It's not about that. It's about under and under something. You don't have to do it on the face of it. I would say. So dialogues with yourself. Why am I thinking this way? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? I remember. I remember uh, uh, going to sleep one night in the process of sleeping, and my hand is in a certain position, and I knew that my hand is there, and it was paining a little bit because there was some pressure on it. and i shifted it after about 10 seconds and it i actually thought about this for the next 10 12 minutes why did i take 10 seconds to shift my hand out from under the place where it's paining and why did i you know do it take 10 seconds over it and i got my answer i had to actually relive i had to recall every little bit of those last 10 minutes you know kya hua kab hua 1 2 3 but i solved it i figured it out okay fine this is why i did that similarly we can actually have these conversations with ourselves as to why did this happen why did i think that way what are the possible reasons and again remember self care the aim like renu said is not for satisfaction the aim is resolution i i need to understand what's happening why i'm doing it see you mr basin thank you for coming so far we are going to take another 5 minutes only though so uh, we need to have dialogues with ourselves and resolve ourselves resolve things discuss things with ourselves i said then we change the we challenge the foundations of our perceived desirable qualities now for example suppose i am i i i think i am a very disciplined person and and i think that's a desirable quality maybe i need to question that why do i why is discipline desirable am i really disciplined do i really enjoy it let's talk about those desirable qualities because chances are there is the opposite side of that quality lurking somewhere within the shadow self that i'm not aware of maybe the outward demonstration of discipline is 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 an antithesis or an opposite to that maybe the shadow bit is opposite uh, to to the to the to the uh, you know externally visible quality of discipline who knows but challenge it 
ask yourself, am I really this way? Because chances are, it is quite possible that the kind of discipline that you think you're following is something out of habit, not necessarily something you like doing or want to do and perhaps might not be thriving with, just as an example. So therefore, it might be a good idea to start challenging the foundations. Why am I this way? Let's just think about that. And uh, those, those are three of them. And uh, that is it. And uh, finally, we have one more question for you. Do you find you need the approval of others? I see Ritu is grinning on this one. Ritu without the double E's. So if you have something to share, please do share. Anybody else? You know, if you have stories about approval, horror stories, the horror, the horrier, the better, please do share. Yeah, I feel I always and every time I need approval. Be it my son, be it my dad, be it my friend, be it my teacher. Mm -hmm. For How about else? writing it down? How about writing this down? Every time you seek approval, even yeah. mentally, like would they approve? You might sometimes exactly. even be doing that, or you yeah. might be going to seek explicit approval. You know, so, that, that this thing, what am I getting approval to mil approval? Is it because I need extra confidence because I'm not so confident about this? Is it the visual appeal of this thing I'm trying to do? So whatever that thing might be, is it the ethical thing? What is it? Have you ever tried doing that? I just take it for granted. It's just that you asked the question and it just uh -huh. clicked right now. I didn't even realize that this is what I was doing. Uh -huh. But you know, even, cool, a small right? thing, even a small mm -hmm. thing, like, you know, if I need to make some change in the in a house, just a furniture, mm -hmm. either so the uske I'll be asking myself, is it okay, Mehul, if I do this? Or if I have to go out somewhere, he's around. And I, I mm -hmm. do it without even realizing. Mm -hmm. So... Perfect. Brilliant. So this is a great place to start your, uh, your journaling. Yeah? So maybe you could just sit down and next time you think about seeking approval, just, just write it down. Uh, that approval sort for um, color of uh, fridge mats. Yeah. And uh, purpose of seeking approval, currently unknown. <laughs> let's see what it is. So, so, so let's see, just write it down. However trivial it is. It might be an interesting. But interesting. I so know. thanks so much for sharing that. Everybody. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anything? So many, so many times we actually buy things, especially clothes. Because, I mean, if there is a choice between two, you pick up something that somebody else has asked you to do and you probably would not enjoy wearing it as much because it, at the back of your mind, you will keep thinking, this was not what I wanted. But at that point of time, you want to please others and actually tell them your approval matters. Get into future proje projection. <laughs> Interestingly, Renu, there also could be a scenario where, where, uh, where I get gratified when people seek my approval. You don't need my approval, but then you might be asked, letting me think I need it because you think it'll make me happy. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Correct. But the thing is, getting your approval for something that I am going to be wearing, when I would be wearing, you are not around, it would not affect me as much. No? Right. It's very strange, uh, people, uh, beings we are. No? So anyway, I want you to think about whether you need the approval of others when you do it. And uh, as mentioned in the previous one, please start becoming a prodigious note taker and note down everything. And again, not everything as in, not the kahani, but the uh, uh, but the gist of it, the clues, the cues, the framework, yeah. So we can, we have something to remember because uh, why am I saying this? I would love it if you would write down the whole kahani. But the problem is, if you write one time, then you will journaling. Because you will think that who will write the whole thing again? But you have established that you have to write the precedent that you have to write like this. So instead of that, just write the little, little cues there so that we can repeat it once again. And we can sustain the process. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying here. That was the last slide. And if you have any questions, please let us have them. And you can see our numbers on the screen. If you need help with this, anything else, just give us a yell. Any questions, guys? Unless you're waiting to, uh, what is the, what's the time? Oh, six minutes left. Time to leave also. Okay. The second Honda switched on his camera and he switched it off again. Camera, yeah. And he's on again. I am <laughs> <There> He is. <laughs> no, no. I attended the first session and really enjoyed it, in fact. So glad yeah, you liked thank it. Thank you for sending the invite and uh, it's eye opening for me. 
I'm so glad you liked it. Which was wait, the first wait, one wait, you You're in Sweden. Amit. You're in Sweden. That's the self-care capital of the world, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Oh, Amit, which one was the first one you attended? Well, today is the first session I'm attending. Achha, today is the first session. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank awesome. you. Glad you liked it. Yeah. Guys, any questions? Any questions? Anything you'd like to share? Anything you'd like to talk about? We have a few minutes, so you're very welcome to share, talk, anything with. Three, two, Kunjan. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't hold myself back. <laughs> no, I was seeing you actually. I, I was watching you. I was thinking maybe I'm wrong because what you do is you bend forward to talk. And it's like your arm is at, it's, it's like oh. your hand is at the thing to switch it off. I but then keep I thought swinging. maybe I was wrong. I have this. No, you, no, 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 you went of... forward and you stayed forward. You didn't go back. <laughs> now thinking maybe I was wrong. And then you switched off then the mic I was and I said, typing. Yes. Then I typed. <laughs> I was then watching. I was no, 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 no. Forward. You were not typing either. <laughs> we are predictable. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my question is that, you know, I See. understand that shadow self is something that kind of unconsciously or subconsciously attracts thing in our life so a lot of times I when there are unwanted things in my life I would look at myself first that you know what is there in me that I fell for this you know, like I attract I led this person in my life now I'm seeing just giving an example so I do feel that it's something in us you know that that led us to attract that trouble in our life and I try to clear it from the root so I, I believe that if I clear it the trouble will go away also but sometimes we find ourselves in a situation it's like a loop we keep coming back into it we are in a situation we know what we need to do to get out of the situation but the energy you need to get out of that situation keeps draining out because you're in that situation you know like you raise a little bit self-care pampering for two days feel good energetic and then boom same thing happens and all that energy drains out because you, it's like being in a fire pit and you're trying to get out of it but all your energy is getting. So it's like you're stuck in a loop. You're trying to work, but you're being in that situation is not going to help you know that. So then what do you do with your shadow self? First, you need to cut and come out of that situation. Then work on your shadow self, or it works the other way. You work on your shadow self and you automatically will come out of that situation. Gunjan, I think you're, you're uh, let's, I would suggest uh, using one system in this case, you're, you're mixing at least two, three different uh, systems. For example, the whole energy system, the whole law of attraction thingy, and then the whole, and there, there's a lot of mix up happening over here. What I would suggest is uh, put all that stuff aside. The shadow self does not attract anything as much as uh, uh, any, any more than what your normal self would, right? Because they are just qualities. The shadow self is simply qualities that are fully manifested at an unconscious level, that is it. There's no concept of, you know, of, of attracting things uh, and, and so on. So if yes, there could be the attractive, uh, there, there could be some attraction in the form of, for example, if something resonates in your shadow self with somebody else, whether the shadow or unconscious or whatever, then of course there would be that sort of, you know, mutual quality-based interaction or attribute-based attraction, but not uh, something like that energetic thing, right? You know, like my shadow self attracts stuff. There's nothing like that in my opinion. Right? You know, anything for, you have to say over that? Yeah. Um, okay. First, Vidika is leaving. Bye, Vidika. Thanks for joining. See you, Vidika. And uh, uh, Gunjan, another thing uh, that you said was that you said you keep getting into the loop. You know all the methods to get out of the situation, but you do not. You are not able to. You know, sometimes acceptance is all you need. You know, every problem or every situation does not need fixing. You, you have experienced, you know, this is what did not work for me. And just let it be at that. The time of rectification or the time of changing is gone. So you let that information be with you and move forward. Healing is more important. You know, you, it's all right to wear these scars at times. And this was one. And second is, sometimes when you say that you know everything, but you're still not able to fix it, again, I would say retrospection and accepting, and you need to take seriously the Courage series of the books. Be more regular. 
लेकिन सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू रेनू गुंजन आई वुड लव टू हैव अ चैट लिटिल बिट मोर ऑन दिस दिस साउंड्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग व्हाट एवर यू एक्सपीरियंसिंग फॉर सेविंग आई लव टू हैव अ चैट इफ एवर यू हैव द टाइम लेट्स हैव अ क्विक 20 30 मिनट चैट इफ यू हैव या आई टोल्ड रेनू जी आल्सो आई वांट टू हैव अ लाइक अ पर्सनल चैट विद यू इफ पॉसिबल टू डिस्कस दिस डन 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 लेट्स लेट लेट्स डू दैट थैंक्स ऑल राइट ऑसम गौरी you want to tell us exactly what is the problem with accepting uh matlab jo bhi issues mujhe lagte hain ki ye this is the issue i i have the issues accepting them like you know nana right hmm. what is the problem with her so mujhe aisa lagta hai kahin na kahin main usko accept nahi kar pa rahi hu us cheez ko us problem ko ki it is it has happened with me or with my daughter or you know and it hmm. उस उसकी वजह से मेरे और उसके रिश्ते भी खराब होते हैं लाइक like, मैं गुस्सा रहती हूँ उससे hmm. और आई नो ये दिक्कत है प्लीज गो नो आई वाज बेसिकली सेइंग दैट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू 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 टॉक अबाउट टू टू यू नो come up with some kind of a reasoning without a fair bit of more conversation as to you know over the background and all that so, but that's all i was saying just a comment back to you now gauri in this case i would say are you trying to find your safe place or comfortable place by being angry and not accepting um i don't know you know be- see because there are two kind of situations <clears throat> one situation that can be altered the other cannot be altered so your situation being the one which cannot be altered do you think being angry and not accepting it gives you the support to move forward because you can't alter the situation no it doesn't help me in any good way as such obviously it gives see yeah uh, it it doesn't help you because you don't want to be helped and that is what i'm pointing out to you are you are you getting more comfortable you know you like again like what sit says self pity is a very comfortable place to be in so that needs rest, uh, retrospection then i'll have to um, think how about it. how about talking yeah of course would love to ठीक है, लेट्स Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Renu. And happy Diwali. Bye. Okay. Happy Diwali. See you, Gunjan. <laughs>